An easy way to reuse data is by storing it in a design library. This is meant for purchased components that do not change. So by looking at my top level of my vault, I can see I have a libraries folder where we can see this design libraries folder. Inside of this design library that lives on the top level everybody has access to that I would like them to have access to. So these files can be used in other assemblies and stay in this top level design library folder. And we can see where these files are being used by using the where used tab. So I can see here that this one component is being used in multiple different assemblies. Now, if we were to reuse data that we've designed, we could use another tool called copy tree to make copies of our components and reuse that already created design data as a stepping stone to create our new project. Copy tree works by taking the file structure of a part or assembly and grouping them all together to be saved in another location or as another name, similar to pack and go. So let's pretend that we're starting a new project, project 10, and it's very similar to the assembly that we created in project seven. We can use copy tree to copy these files into our new project so that we can go ahead and start making our design changes and we have a stepping stone to start from. So let's go ahead and if I access project seven inside of my design data folder, I can see I have this top level 10,239 assembly. Looking at the contains tab, I can see this assembly contains components, some simulation results, sub assemblies, drawings, things like that. So again, we can utilize this as a stepping stone and we can copy this entire tree of references into our new project 10 folder so that we can go ahead and start making our design changes. To access copy tree with the file highlighted, I can go to tools and choose copy tree. So when looking at copy tree, we can see this dialog box gives us a lot of the same functionality as SolidWorks pack and go with the addition of some PDM functionality as well, such as check in on copy. I can also rename with a serial number as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where do I want to copy these files to. I'll go ahead and I'll browse. I can see that I'm currently in my project seven design data folder. I'm going to navigate over to my project 10 design data folder. And I'll go ahead and I'll select this folder as my destination. I can choose what do I want to include in this copy tree. I can include that simulation file if I wanted to. I can include the drawing. I can even name the drawing after their model as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename all of these new files with a serial number and I'll just choose my default mountain scooter demo and press OK. And when I do press OK, notice that all of these files turn yellow indicating that something here has changed. So I can see my target file name showing in blue, indicating that this has changed from the original file. And I can see they all follow the same naming convention. You'll also notice the white lines where it says excluded. The reason these files are being excluded from copy tree is because if you look where they are found, they are all of these files that are being excluded are found in the design library. So my admin has set this up to exclude all of the files in my design library to ensure that I'm not making copies of these purchased components that we saw from earlier. So we'll go ahead and we'll press copy. So while we're copying these files, we can see where in the admin tool, the admin can exclude files from copy tree. We can see it is a user or group permission. So once our copy tree command finished, let's go navigate to our project 10 design data folder to find the copied file as well as all of its references. So inside this folder, I see I have the copy of the file as well as all of its references with these new serial numbers that it generated from copy tree. If we were going to reuse these files, most likely we want to start them at the top of our workflow, get them approved and ultimately receive revision A. What you'll notice is that because we copied files that already released with a revision, the revision was copied as well. So I can see all of these copied files now have revision A. Usually when we use copy tree, we want to clear this value out. So by looking at our users settings in the admin tool, 
You can see under copy tree, we have the ability to clear variables out or overwrite them with a different value. So here you can see that I've added the revision variable in and the value is blank. So by adding in this setting, let's go ahead and run another copy tree and we'll see how the revision variable will be cleared out. Now that our user setting is applied, I've gone back to project seven and again, reran the copy tree. This time you'll notice that I've added a suffix of dash new. So every file that we see that ends in dash new should now have a cleared revision value. Let's go ahead and run the copy tree and we'll see what happens with these new files. Once the copy tree command is complete, we'll navigate over to our project 10 design data folder. And now notice that every part that ends in the word dash new has a clear revision value. This will allow us to reuse this data from scratch. And now we can go ahead and make our changes and then ultimately get that approved. So this has been a designing and reusing with SOLIDWORKS PDM. If you like this video, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel.